Today's jobs report was better than expected, showing that the U.S. economy added more jobs than anticipated in December, while the unemployment rate held steady at 3.7 percent. Here to share his take on the jobs data and what it could mean for the Fed's path forward is Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Mark, it's great to have you back on the show. To me, the takeaway here, okay, we, we, we saw the previous two months revised lower. We had the stronger number in December. We know December tends to be a little noisy. Um, but to me, the real takeaway here was the fact that, that, that wages continue to grow, and they're growing faster than inflation. What does that tell us? Good news. Uh, wage growth is 4%-ish. Inflation, CPI inflation is about 3% and moderating. So that means uh, real uh, wage growth is positive, about one percentage point. That means consumers' purchasing power is improving, and that's the fodder for continued spending. And, of course, it's the consumer that kind of drives the train. And as long as they're doing their part, hanging tough, spending, and with those real income gains they should, the economy should continue to move forward and recession remain at bay. So good news. Okay. Uh, last year, at a time where, at least to start the year, everybody was saying, oh, we're going to get a recession in 2023. You were like, oh, I'm not so sure that's going to happen. Your call proved to be the right one. So given what you just said, your expectations for 2024, and what are the key metrics or data that you're going to be watching to know that, in fact, a so-called soft landing is upon us? Yeah, well, thanks for calling that out. That's very kind of you, Morgan. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm, you know, I feel pretty good about 24. Uh, you know, growth may not be quite as strong as in 2023. Fiscal policy is going to be a bit of a drag as opposed to a bit of a tailwind to growth. But uh, you know, the key always, in my mind, does go back to the consumer. They do drive the train. And you know, uh, there's just a lot of, I think, favorable conditions there. We mentioned, I mentioned, real wage growth. Uh, debt service burdens are low and uh, consumers have done a very good job of locking in stock prices and housing values are pretty close to their record highs. So people's net worth is up. Got a lot of excess saving, particularly among the high income households, high middle income households. So, you know, lots of good reasons to think that consumers are going to continue to, you know, hang tough, do their thing. I don't, they're not going to spend with abandon, uh, but we don't need them to or want them to because that could be inflationary. But uh, just as long as they, continue to grow, uh, spending continues to grow at about 2% real, which is what we've been doing, we, we should be just fine. Mark, you mentioned stock prices and housing values, th those being high, only good for the upper middle class and the upper class, right? And I wonder in 2024, if the lower income consumer, the middle class consumer, not just in politics, but also in the economy, might matter more. And the wages certainly are important for them, but so is the stretched credit, the higher interest rates on credit cards. How much of an issue is the relative lack of good news for people who don't own assets? Yeah, no, you make a great point, John. I mean, I think folks in the top two-thirds of the income distribution, no problem. Everything is fine. Uh, they, continue, they should continue to spend. And that's where the bulk of the spending occurs. So that will allow the economy to continue to move forward without recession. But the bottom third of folks in the income distribution, they are indeed under a significant amount of pressure. Uh, uh, their real incomes have, uh, until recently, been declining. Uh, they're now starting to rise, but that's after a period of declining real uh, wages uh, because of the higher inflation. Uh, they do have, they have taken on a lot of debt uh, to supplement their income in the high inflation period. So credit card debt, consumer finance loans, that kind of thing. Uh, and you're right. They don't. They don't own this. They don't own stocks. Only 60% of Americans own stocks, and they don't own homes. Only uh, two thirds of American own homes. So they're, you know, they're going to be. They're struggling now. The good news is, uh, the job market is very strong. We're creating lots of jobs. A lot of good-paying jobs. Uh, you know, unemployment is low. Uh, Four percent uh, uh, below. Four percent. We've been there for two years, and it's helping all groups: uh, high income, low income, all demographics you know, uh, white males and uh, black and Hispanic populations. So that's all very good news. So as long as inflation continues to moderate, you know, as long as gas prices stay down and uh, we get uh, some relief in, in terms of rents and, and food prices, uh, and as long as interest rates continue to move south, hopefully they can follow through and cut those interest rates because that would be really very important. Uh, credit card rates are tied directly to what the Fed's going to do. I think uh, conditions should improve for those lower income households. But as you point out, they've been under a lot of stress.